you're going to need to have a positive direction labeled so that you can tell that they're in opposite directions. So for this problem, let's just say that the positive direction is in that direction. And because you're trying to find where they are in relation to the flagpole, we're going to say that right here at the flagpole, that's zero. And so on this side of the flagpole, that's west, and this side of the flagpole, that's east. Now you don't really need to have the arrows, I'm just doing that to show you that that side's west and that side's east. And so um, over here in our givens, we're going to have the x initial for runner A. And for that him, that's going to be negative six kilometers. And the reason it's negative six kilometers is because with the flagpole being at zero, to go six kilometers west of the flagpole, you're going in the negative direction. You're going against the positive. So he's negative six kilometers away. The x initial for runner B is five kilometers and that's positive because he's on the positive side of the flagpole. The velocity for A <clears throat> is nine kilometers an hour and it's positive because he's going with the positive direction and for runner B logically he is going to have a negative velocity and that's negative eight kilometers an hour. <clears throat> And so what we're trying to find is the point at which they intersect, be it over here or over here, wherever. We'll find that out later. So the first thing that we're actually going to have to find is the time that it takes for them to meet. And that's just because with the thing we're going to do with the equation, you're not going to be able to find for their x position right off the bat. And so I'm just going to leave this blank for now so you guys can see exactly what we're going to be filling in. So for our equation, we've got you know our normal equation. Let me write it out. Okay. And so for both of these guys, we have their initial x position and their v average. But we have two unknowns. We don't know their x final, and we don't know the change in time. So what we're going to do is, since we are f trying to find where their x's, their x finals are the same, we're basically going to substitute the problem together. So since x final is equal to that, we can set the x initial for a plus the average velocity for a and then the time is equal to the x initial for b and the velocity for b times the time. And the time in both of these are going to be the exact same. So what we need to do now is solve for the time and then after we've solved for the time we can plug that back in to this equation to find the distance that they travel. So what we're going to do is get both of the t's to one side so we can isolate the t. So we're going to subtract um, we're going to subtract this and we're going to subtract this from both sides. So we end up with x initial of a minus x initial of b is equal to velocity of b times time minus the velocity of a times time. From there, we are going to factor out the t from over here. So we end up with t times, and then in the parentheses, vb minus va. And that's just using some math skills. Hopefully you guys understand that. Don't get caught up in that, though. Hopefully it won't be that hard to understand. Then, since you're trying to get t by itself, you just divide by this term. So you end up with x initial a minus x initial b over vb minus va is equal 
to t. And so we can plug in all of our values and it's here that you can really tell if you put your positives and negatives correctly because we're solving for an amount of time and you cannot have negative time. So if you end up with a negative then you know that somewhere along the way you put a wrong negative in there. And so the initial x for runner A is negative 6 kilometers and then for runner B it's so it's minus and then just a positive 5 kilometers and that's over velocity B which is negative 8 kilometers an hour oops there we go and then minus uh, that's gonna be minus and then 9 kilometers an hour and don't ask me why I just put parentheses there I just randomly did and so if you solve that out the kilometers end up canceling and so the unit you're left with is 11 over 17 hours and so what you do is you take that amount and you plug it back in to this equation to the equation we've been using all along so for the second time you're going to basically just have the substitution and you're going to pick one you're either going to pick runner A or runner B and just use their values so let's just say runner A so you've got the x final is equal to and so his x initial is negative six kilometers and then plus his velocity which is nine kilometers an hour and that's times eleven over seventeen hours and so one second just so you can see that there's the distinction there and so if you multiply those together what you're going to end up with is your x final and so you solve all of that and the answer you get should be point one seven six kilometers but with a negative and you may be looking at your sheet and the answer says 0.176 kilometers west well because of the way that we did our sketch anything that is negative or is to the left of zero on a number line is west of the flagpole because the flagpole is at zero so since the value was a negative that means that the place that they meet is somewhere around there. Alright, so now let's move on. So now what we're going to do is question number eight. I skipped question number seven just because I don't have the reaction time spreadsheet that it says for you guys to use. So I can't really be of any help with that. Not sure if you guys will have to do that for your problem bank but if so hopefully your teacher will have explained it to you alright so for number eight we are given this graph and once again you can see my amazing artistic skills and you're told to describe the walkers location relative to the reference point which the reference point is at zero zero meters um, so you're also supposed to talk about their direction of motion and their rate of motion so they start out negative two meters from the reference point and they move at a changing rate of motion toward the reference point and at one second they have come even with the reference point point. and now this problem is basically just me explaining or describing what this graph is doing um, the actual changing motion is your next unit I believe in physics so I don't know I think it's this is more just a prep problem for your next unit but you're also supposed to be able to explain motion and everything for your problem bank quiz so um, after one second it once again accelerates and it moves at an even faster velocity and after another second it has ended up at six meters away from the reference point so that's simple enough 
Um, now we're also going to go into number nine, which is really similar in what it's asking. Uh, all the intervals are straight, so because it is changing its position at a constant rate, you can know that the velocity stays the same as it goes along. So it starts off at five meters away from the reference point, and then it moves at a constant velocity until it stops at 15 meters away from the reference point. And so after it waits for a couple of seconds, it then starts moving back toward the reference point at a constant velocity, moves past the reference point, and stays at that velocity until it is 15 meters away from the reference point. All right, and so that's just a quick description of number nine's graph. And now number 10 is wanting you to do pretty much the exact same thing, except some, some of the intervals are curved and some are not. The main thing that they want you to realize is that when it curves, the velocity is changing. When it's straight, when it's a straight line, the velocity is staying um, the same because position is changing at a constant rate. But when position begins to change at a non-constant rate, that is because um, the velocity is changing. And so you'll get into more of that next unit, but in this unit they just want you to recognize that. And so from 0 to 1 seconds, it's moving away from the reference point at a constant velocity. For 1 to 2 seconds, it is changing its velocity and slowing to a stop because whenever position, a position versus time graph levels out, that is because it has stopped. The position is not changing, though time is increasing. Then from the interval 2 to 3, it is stopped. From 3 to 4, it begins changing its speed and it accelerates or it speeds up and its velocity changes. And then for the last interval, interval 4 to 5, it's moving away once again at a constant velocity. This has been a B&E Creative Studios physics tutorial. I hope that it helped you to understand some of the things on the problem bank more. Like I've said before, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, go to the Contact Us page on our website and fill out the form, or email us directly at bestudios.physics at gmail.com. See you next time.